welcome back to the Chronicles of Humanism, where we explore what happened this week in history and talk about what it has to do with humanism. In case you're not familiar, humanism is a philosophy that looks for ways to solve society's problems and answer life's big questions using reason, science, and critical thinking. I'm Kiwi Callahan, I'm a member of the Secular Humanist Society of New York, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking I am way too perky right now because it's January, which means the holidays are over, which means everything is awful and there's nothing to look forward to. Well, you are wrong, my friend. There is another holiday in January, and it's today. It's Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day, and it is awesome. Of course, he's not just Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He's the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., a very religious man and technically not a humanist. So why are we talking about this? Well, smarty pants, you don't have to be religious to appreciate this man or the work that he did. Everything he fought for is right in line with humanist values. Let's start with the easy stuff. If you went to school anywhere in the US, you hopefully already know all about his extraordinary work with the American Civil Rights Movement. The Montgomery bus boycott, Selma, the March on Washington. His courage and dedication to his cause made the words civil rights and human rights household terms. People all over the country from all walks of life knew something big was happening, and that was largely because of him. But did you also know that he received the Margaret Sanger Award from the Planned Parenthood of America Foundation in 1966 because he was such a strong advocate for family planning? And, despite being a very religious man, was a very strong advocate for the separation of church and state. Amazing, right? So if you look at his work and at his life, it's easy to see why humanists would love this guy. Civil rights are human rights, and protecting human rights is at the very core of the humanist philosophy. You might have guessed that from our name, humanists. See what we did there? Like, put the... The thing in the name. To, okay, anyway, today is a great time to check in on our progress on human rights, not just here, but around the world. So let's take a look. First of all, what are human rights exactly? Most of the world has agreed that humans everywhere deserve four basic freedoms. Freedom of speech, freedom of worship, freedom from want, and freedom from fear. The concept of the four freedoms was actually coined by our very own FDR back in 1941 in his State of the Union speech. So how does the world look today in terms of the four freedoms? Well, not so great it turns out. These three of the four freedoms are pretty closely intertwined, and the International Humanist and Ethical Union has compiled a huge report that ranks every country in the world according to how well they protect these three freedoms. It's about 400 pages long, so I'm just going to give you the short version. I'm assuming that's okay with you. But if you do want to read the whole thing, you can download it for free at www.freethoughtreport.com. Okay, so here are the results. This map is color-coded according to five different levels of freedom, from grave violations in black to free and equal in green. There are only eight countries that were found to be truly free and equal. You couldn't even find them, could you? That's okay. I'm going to break it down for you. There are 196 countries in the world. Now I know that that number varies depending on who you ask because some people recognize that some countries are countries and other people think they're not. That is a two hour lecture in itself. So you know what, why don't you just zip it, Captain Semantics, okay? For our purposes, there are 196 countries in the world. Of those, 31 had multiple grave violations to the human right of freedom of expression. For example, blasphemy and apostasy being punishable by death having a government that is under complete control of a totalitarian religious regime, and advocates for democracy and freedom of expression are brutally repressed. You've probably heard about events happening in most of these places recently. Bangladesh, where humanist bloggers were murdered last year. Saudi Arabia, where a poet was sentenced to death by beheading for allegedly renouncing Islam. And of course, anywhere ISIS... Oh wait, I'm sorry. There we go. No, I like the other version better. Yeah, much better. Anyway, of course, anywhere ISIS calls home is not going to be great for human rights or religious freedom. Of the 165 that are left, 52 were found to have severe discrimination, which means you're doing marginally better if you're in a minority opinion, but you're still going to jail for life for blasphemy or apostasy, and you're going to suffer heavily for speaking out against the state, 
and you would probably still be required by law to complete religious education. Alongside places you would expect to have this kind of atmosphere, like India and Rwanda, there are also lots of places you would not expect to see this far down on the list, like New Zealand, Germany, Greece, and Israel. Next, we have the 88 countries who have systemic discrimination. That's 45% of the world, by far the biggest chunk. In these countries, the laws might be a little more progressive regarding religious and thought requirements, but there is generally still an established national religion, and you still have religious courts ruling in some matters. Next, you have the 17 that are mostly satisfactory. This is where the U.S. falls, in case you are wondering. I bet you thought we'd be at the top of the list, didn't you? Well, we're doing okay, but like other countries in this category, there are still lots of regions where atheists can't hold office, and there's also a decent amount of government mixing with one specific religion above all others. Which leaves only eight countries that were found to be free and equal for people of all religions and the non-religious. Taiwan, Estonia, Kosovo, Belgium, the Netherlands, Fiji, Kiribati, and Nauru. Nauru beat us out, you guys. I mean, really. So while we celebrate the progress that Dr. King brought to this great nation and this great planet, let's also remember that there's still lots of work to be done. The best way you can honor Dr. King today is to get out there and be active in your community. If you're not sure what kind of things are happening around you, you can go to www.mlkday.gov and enter your zip code to find out. If you want to see how humanists are making the world a better place, you can visit our website at www.shsny.org and come enjoy life with us. I'm Kiwi Callahan. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, stay curious!